as we know, INFJs can be very hard workers and we can, we can, I think in the profile it does say we can burn out easily. So energy is actually really important for us. And so I know for me, I burnt out my first business because I just didn't stop. And it's so important to stop and rest and fill up your cup and then energetically be able to jump back on the bandwagon the next time. Do you know what I mean? And that's so important yeah. for longevity in, in your business. Like uh, this yeah. is why I think a lot of people crash and burn when they're side hustling is because it's like, oh, I'm working a full-time job. How am I supposed to have the time to start and run a side hustle, especially if I've got a family and I've got commitments and I've got responsibilities. And, you know, that's where I was at only a year ago. I was like, how do I run a side hustle when I'm working full time and doing overtime? Um, I'm wanting to look after my fitness. I want to maintain friendships and relationships with family. Like how do you squeeze all this in? You know, I'm very passionate about this topic because that was the big thing that held me back initially when I first wanted to start a side hustle, apart from all the fear, it was like, well, practically, how am I supposed to even do this? Like, my job takes 40 hours a week. I've got to sleep. I've got to eat. I've got to travel. Like, how does that even work, you know? Yeah. Um, but what I like to do is actually break it down for people so they can kind of realize there's actually more time available to them than what they think, you know? So in a normal work, in a normal week, right, we have 168 hours available to us, right? So it's a lot of time. When you take away 40 hours of work a week, so full-time equivalent, and you take away, if you're sleeping approximately seven hours a night, you take it, that's 49 hours a week that you take out, right? And then if you travel one hour a day to, to and from work, that's five hours out of the week. If you happen to exercise five days a week, one hour a day, that's also five hours out. And if you grocery shop, you know, your physical self rather than ordering online, that could be like approximately like two hours, right? To do the full grocery shop. So that leaves 67 hours left for the rest of that one week. And that's nearly, if you put it into working hours, that's actually eight working days left available to you. So we've taken out the mandatory things, right? The major things that you have to do, like if you have to you know, work your job, you have to travel, you have to do all that sort of stuff. If you take an exercise, that's more time available to you. Not that I recommend that because that's important for your health and stuff, but right. eight working days. So... When um, I researched how much TV the average, um, it was actually American because US stats because I couldn't find <laughs> Aussies, probably the same though. Um, in seven, 2017, on average, people spent three hours and 58 minutes a day watching TV. Um, and US yeah. adults are watching five hours and four minutes of television on average per day. So that's 35.5 hours a week, which is nearly another working week. Um, which is insane. So you can actually get apps which track the amount of time you're on social media. So if you're getting like, you know, trapped in the scroll hole, so to speak, on Facebook, wasting your time there, spending all night watching Netflix, like there's actually a lot of, there's actually more time available than we think there is. So for example, if you're going to work and doing all the things, coming home, watching four to five hours of Netflix or, you know, Foxtel or Stan or TV or whatever of a night, right. you can literally use two hours of that to build your business, you know, and you can do it maybe nearly like for me, the way I did it was, is I did it. Um, now that I know better, this is how I would run things differently. So when I did work a nine to five Monday to Friday, I would work um, about two hours, approximately a night in my business, right? So posting on social media, getting back to messages, getting all that sort of stuff happening. And then on the weekend, I would take one full day. Like, this is what I would do now. I didn't do it this way before, but this is how I would suggest it. I just worked all the time before. It was crazy. <laughs> but if I did it again, it would be one day on the weekend that I would commit to my business and then one day off from everything. One day off from all obligations, anything that I needed to do. It was, like, not going to happen that day. It was a me day, like, just to recharge, ready for the next week to come. Yeah. So if you think about it, you've got every day after work. And then one full day on the weekends. So that's enough to actually build a business and earn some money and get things going, you know. So it's just about making it a priority and being committed to your dream. Um, because there comes a point in time where you, you have to reach a pain threshold. It's like, can I keep working this job that's sucking the life out of me, is soul-sucking, is not what I want to do, is repetitive or, you know, whatever, for the next 40 plus years of my life. And if the answer is no, it's time to start doing something now about it and getting that side hustle going. And it's okay if your side hustle takes a bit longer than what you think. At least yeah. you're not giving up, you know, and just yes. settling for a life you're not happy with. Yes. Oh, there's so many people, so many people that I know that are just content 
to work in a job that they hate and they just feel like they have to do that. And I feel like it's a lie that we've been told because mm -hmm. I've been told it the same thing that you have to work you and you have to work for a corporation or for somebody else because it's more stable and it's more reliable. And even if you hate it, that's totally fine. That's just how it is. And you have to accept it so that you can do what you want to do after work. Um, but for me, I've never accepted that. And, and now that I'm at the point where I'm like, okay, I, I'm doing something else and I understand that it can work. Now I'm almost upset that I accepted it for so long. <laughs> I, I should have started sooner. I love that you broke down the time though, because that's one of the things that I struggle with a lot. And I wouldn't have thought that there was 68 or 67 extra hours in a week. And I know for myself, I'm one of those people who runs home from work just so that I can crawl into bed or the couch or whatever it is and turn on Netflix. And a lot of times that's how I recharge. But then I found myself reaching for social media too. So I'll sit there and watch, watch Netflix and scroll through my phone. And I realize that I waste so much time doing that. And I never, I never understood or thought that I needed to limit social media in the past. And it's really only in the last maybe year that I started thinking about that because mm -hmm. I just thought it was fun and it's something that everybody does and why does everybody have a problem with it? But now once I have all this other stuff to do, then it's like, it really does waste a lot of time. It, it wastes a lot of time and what do you really gain from it? Well, that's it. Like, that's what I had to get really honest with myself about because um, same thing about a year. Actually, no, when I first started my first business, this is once again what I did wrong. I was on social media probably too much. Not only keeping up with my own business stuff, but checking everyone else, feeling like that compulsion to have to jump on because I was you know, scared of missing out, like that major fame. Like, what if I don't see if such and such, you know, is jumping on a beach today or this person's breakfast? Like, who gives a shit, right? So, <laughs> right. <laughs> so the really important stuff I usually find out anyway or someone tells me so now what I do is much more strategic so if I was to be on Facebook and checking up on everyone and stalking everyone and fear of FOMO and all this I literally wouldn't have a business and what I started to notice was is I was sitting online I was scrolling every night and I was starting to get really jealous of people I'm like I want their life I want to be doing what they're doing but here I am feeling miserable at the end of my working day um, or getting ready to go to night shift for four nights and a night to kill myself, right? Like it was killing me having to do that yeah. on a full-time basis. And once I actually started limiting my social media, so one day a week, I'll put my phone in my bedroom drawer off. I won't even have it on. It's just a me day, as I said before. I feel so much more replenished in my mind. And the comparisonitis has died down so much more. And I don't even feel like I'm missing out on that much at all. Because when you have a successful side hustle, and you're loving it and you're committed to it. And once you reach a point where you're actually quite busy, you just don't have time for that anymore. So now I jump on, look at the bare minimum if I even have to. But most of the time, it's just putting my business stuff out there. My Instagram stories, my Instagram feed, hopping on Facebook, you know, posting in other groups, checking my group. That takes up a good portion of time. Um, and so I noticed that, yeah, once again, mindset, energy, strategy. So my mindset was changing from all the social media because I was getting into comparison, not feeling good enough, comparing myself and my life to others when I really didn't need to. It would affect my energy. I'd feel low energy. Um, and then strategy, well, I didn't have one. I wasn't playing one out with my business. I wasn't, you know, utilizing my time to the best of my ability. And every hour, you know, is precious. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I, I got stuck so much and I still do sometimes in the comparison. Yeah. Um, and I, I realized too, that there are a couple of pictures that I have, um, that I've sent to other people, just people that I've met, some famous people that I've met and I know what happened in the moment and it was basically a less than 30 second type of thing, but it resulted in this amazing picture. And, you know, they, they want to know the whole story and everything that happened and break down every detail. And I'm like, listen, it was 30 seconds, you know, <laughs> and, and that kind of got me thinking about all these pictures that you see on social media. And I'm like, you know, how many of them are probably this 30 second thing that's totally staged and it has nothing to do with their life. Um, 
And also, I've run into a couple of apps that fix your face for you. <laughs> I'm sure you've probably seen these that like make your face look perfect. And then I noticed I never take selfies, right? But the other day I was trying to take a selfie because I'm trying to be more present in, um, on Instagram, show more of my face and stuff. Yay. So, <laughs> so I'm playing with my iPhone and it has this portrait mode and then it has one that like makes your face look perfect. And I was like, I thought everybody on Instagram like just looked perfect and I thought there was something wrong with me. Well, I'm just late. I'm just totally late to the game. They have like 12 different apps or they have a fancy new iPhone and that's why they look perfect. And so basically everything you see on social media is fake news. Like all of it, even the it's pictures of your friends. Yeah. It's an alternate reality. Like let's mm -hmm. face it. I think it's a hard one because you can't expect an online platform to reflect life fully because it's just not possible. Yeah. Even if you were to follow me around all day and record my day, it's still not going to be like, well, one, it's probably not that interesting, but two, it's like, <laughs> it's like, it's just someone else looking in on my reality. Like they're not in my mind experiencing my experiences, walking in my shoes. So it's like anything that gets posted anyway is never going to be a hundred percent accurate, you know? So Right. I've personally, like, I used to really resent that. And now I realize that that's just the way it is. And that's okay. And in a way, it's good because you can access that when you want to, you can pull away from it when you don't. And right. everyone's perceptions are going to be so different of what's posted as well. Do you know what I mean? Like, because a lot of my stuff online now is business related, people will probably think, oh, Olivia is so one dimensional. She only talks about business stuff. Ugh, how boring. <laughs> that's not their thing. And that's cool because, Great. you know, they're welcome to think that way. I've um, definitely got more other interests and passions going on behind the scenes. But, you know, when you are juggling so much, right now, this is the priority. Do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. um, it is all about business right now and entrepreneurship and spirituality and law of attraction and manifesting and money and, and connecting and all that sort of stuff, like building brands and whatnot. So on the outside, I probably look very, I don't know, superficial one dimensional but like people that know me know that I have multiple passions and interests going on that I just don't have to speak about because when you're building an online brand it doesn't have to encompass absolutely everything about you that confuses the message do you know what I mean the more niche you are the better it is to reach your target market and your target audience and your you know ideal clients and all that sort of stuff so I've accepted a while ago that yeah online media online or well, social media is you know an alternate reality <laughs>